Data modeling might sound a bit intimidating at first, but I'll show you today that there's nothing overly complicated about it. You don't have to be a ChatGPT data engineer to do some simple data modeling. I'll build a star schema and a snowflake schema in Power BI to show you how you can create your own data models by using some practical examples. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Mochen and I work as a data and analytics analyst. I have six years of experience working with complex big data in the financial services industry and my ultimate goal is to help you get better at data analysis so that you can get a better job doing something you actually enjoy doing for more money. And for those of you who are not new, Welcome back. You know I love some practical data analysis content, so without further ado, I'm gonna get started. Okay, like I said, we'll be doing some simple data modeling in Power BI, and by the end of this video tutorial, you'll know exactly what the differences are between a star and a snowflake schema. So let me just show you what they are first before we jump into actually recreating everything and uh, making our data model. So this is a star schema. It's very, very simple. It's got one fact table right here in the middle, gym equipment sales, and we have three dimension tables connected to it. We have the stores table, then uh, we have the products table, and then we have the date table. So you can see that the stores table is connected on the store ID as I hover over this uh, little relationship here. And then the products table is connected on the product ID, and then the date table is connected on the date column. That's it. It's really, really simple. So again, one fact table, and then you have three dimension tables, and that's it. This is a simple star schema. Now let me just open up the snowflake schema. So this is a little bit different in the sense that you can think of this as the extension of a star schema. So the dimension tables will have sub dimension tables. So again, we have the gym equipment sales fact table, and this time let's take stores, for example. So we have the stores table connected on the store ID to the gym equipment sales fact table, but then the stores table is connected to the cities table on the city ID, as you can see, and then the cities table is connected to the countries table on the country ID. Now let's take the products, for example. So you can see that the products table right here is connected again on the product ID to the fact table, but then the products table is connected on the subcategory ID to the subcategories table, and then the subcategories table is connected on the category ID to the categories table. We still have the same date dimension table, which is obviously connected to the fact table on the date column. So before actually jumping into Power BI and starting to make things, let me just show you the actual data set that we'll be working with. So this is it. It's a fictitious gym equipment sales data set. And uh, yeah, I made this up. So it's perfect for this kind of data modeling. We only have one table and we're going to use this one table and uh, we're going to break this down into a fact table and multiple dimension tables. So you can see that we have the order ID, the date, and then we have a bunch of columns that refer to the product. So we have the product ID, the product name, the price, the currency, category ID, category name, subcategory ID, subcategory name, and then we have a bunch of columns that refer to store information like the store ID, store name, city ID, city name, country ID, and the country columns. So what we're gonna do now is, I already have a blank Power BI file open here. We're gonna load the data, and the data modeling itself will happen within Power BI, but we're gonna set ourselves up for success in Power Query by actually creating those uh, dimension tables and the fact table. So I'm in Power BI now, and I'm gonna go to get data, and then I'm gonna get the data from a CSV file, which is the gym equipment sales. All right, so now I'm just gonna hit transform data instead of loading the data, and this is gonna take me to Power Query. All right, so I have gym equipment sales table right here. You can see that it's the same data that we looked at in Excel. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna duplicate it once, twice, and I'm gonna duplicate this three times. And actually to save myself some memory, 
I'm going to quit this file. And then I'm also going to quit my Snowflake one because we're going to recreate these anyway. So I'm not going to save this. And there we go, back to Power Query. So I'm going to call my first duplicate query. I'm going to call this my uh, date table, I guess. Yep. And then the second one, I can call it the products. And then the third one, I'm going to call it stores. All right. So now if I'm looking at this, right? So in the date table, obviously, I only want the date column. So you can click on the date column and then remove other columns, and I'm left with only one. Now, what you can do here is go to add column. And because Power BI already knows that this is a date and you can you can see it by the little icon here, or you can go to change type and you'll see that it's a date. There's nothing else you can do. So go on to the date and I'm going to extract the year and then I'm going to extract the month and then I'm going to extract the quarter, for example, maybe, yeah, quarter of the year. And then let me just move year, quarter, month. Yeah, let me move it into the right order. So this is our date dimension table and that's it. It's done. Super quick break. And don't worry, this is not a sponsored message. This is a message from me, Mo. If you gained any value out of this video or any one of my videos so far, then can I ask you two simple favors, please? One, subscribe to the channel. It helps everything I do more than you know. Two, check out my personal website at mochen.info to get exclusive data analysis content if you want to grow your data career in the fastest possible way. So let me move on to the product table. So in the product table, right, I only want product information, which makes sense. So I would like the product ID, the product name, and you can hold down control and uh, yeah, just keep on clicking and you'll be able to multi-select. I don't want the price, the currency, but I would like the category ID, the category name, the subcategory ID, and the subcategory name. Right click, remove other columns. Fantastic. Now, the only thing you have to do here, right? Let me just uh, sort ascending on the product ID. You'll see that we'll have a bunch of duplicates. So go to the top left here and then remove duplicates. And then now you have the product dimension table. And then I probably should have done the same with the date. So let me just sort ascending and then remove the duplicate. So this is our date dimension table. Now let me go to the stores query with the stores um, data, obviously. So here I only want to see information relevant to the stores. So this is going to be store ID, again, hold down control and then multi-select store name, city ID, city names, country ID and country, remove other columns. And uh, let me just uh, sort ascending again and then remove the duplicates. And there we go. So now all we have to do is go back to our uh, fact table and remove all the columns that we don't need. So date, we'll need, product ID, we'll need, product name, we don't need, price and currency, yes, we wanna keep those. Um, we don't need the category ID because we can easily get that from the product ID, category name, subcategory ID, subcategory name, we don't need any of those. And then we don't need the store name, city ID, city name, country ID, country columns, because with the store ID, we'll be able to connect all that information and we'll have access to it. So right click, remove columns. And from the fact table, obviously, we're not gonna remove the duplicates. And that's about it. So now if you go to home, and then close and apply, we just need to wait for Power Query and Power BI to do the magic, and then our data is going to be loaded. So the next step is to actually go to the model view right here. And you can see that Power BI has already identified these relationships. So yeah, Power BI is quite smart. It wasn't that difficult. It's a simple star schema. So let's just look through it quickly. So let me hover over this little arrow here. And yes, Power BI correctly said that the store ID column is the one that should be the connector between the stores and the gym equipment sales table. And then we can see that it's a many to one relationship so that is correct. The relationship is active. Cross filter direction is single, which is correct. So let me just move on to the other one. Product ID. Yes, that's correct again. So the products and the gym equipment sales fact table connected on the product ID. This relationship is correct too. And then the only thing we're missing here really is the date. So let me just uh, 
There you go, create this relationship, one to many single cross filter direction, and then the relationship will be active. Perfect. And there we go. That's our simple star schema. Super, super simple. Nothing really complicated about this. And just to test that our visuals actually work, let me just throw in a clustered column chart. And then let me pick um, the price. And then I'll just pick a date from here. And uh, let me make it a little, oh, let me just make it a little bit bigger and add, say, for example, the category name onto it. And then let me just go up, up, and then, yeah, see it by the years. So you can see that the visual clearly works. So we can see that we have a column chart here and we have the category name in the legend. We have the prices summed up and we have the price is summed up over multiple years for all of these categories. So everything works, the star schema is good to go. And just on learning, well, anything like this or Power BI or anything else, make sure you check out DataCamp if you want to. They've been a long-term partner of mine and honestly, they're really, really good. I've learned a bunch of things on DataCamp. So yeah, if you're interested, make sure to check them out. The link is in the description below. And with the star schema out of the way, let me just open up a blank report and we're gonna create the snowflake schema this time. And actually, instead of opening up the blank report, what I probably should have done is I can just uh, use the star schema. So let me just close this and I can just use the star schema. So this one, I'm gonna save it as, um, what should I save it as? So I'll save it as, star schema two. Yeah, let me just save it down. Okay, so this is the first one. And now I'm going to do a save as I'm going to save it in the same folder. So it's going to be my downloads folder. And this time, I'm going to call this snowflake. So snowflake schema two, I'm going to save down the file. And what I'm going to do now is, if I go back to the top right here, you can see that if I click on the three dots, then I can go to edit query. Now, if I do this, what's gonna happen is that I go back to power query and I can just use my star schema and I can extend this into a snowflake schema. So this is probably the quickest and easiest way to do it. So my fact table is not going to change. My date dimension table is not going to change, but my products table is gonna change because we have sub dimension tables. So let me just remind ourselves really quickly here that um, we have some sub dimension tables right here. You can see that the products table connects to the subcategories table, which connects to the categories table. And then we have the stores table. Let me just make it bigger, which connects to the cities table, which connects to the country's dimension table. So this is what we're gonna do now. So the product table, let me just uh, duplicate it and then duplicate it again. And then the first one, I'm gonna call it sub categories. And then the second one, I'm gonna call it categories. All right, so if I go into subcategories, right, all the data I need here really is the subcategory ID, the subcategory name, and the category ID. Remove other columns. Let me just sort ascending by the subcategory ID and then remove the duplicates. I go into categories. I really only need two columns here, category ID and category name. I'm gonna remove all other columns and then remove the duplicates. There we go. Now. I'm gonna to go to the stores dimension table and I'm gonna duplicate this once and then I'm gonna duplicate it twice. The first one, uh, I'm gonna call it cities and then the second one, I'm gonna call it countries. Countries, I cannot type. Countries. All right, so cities and countries and then cities obviously will contain city ID, the city name and the country ID remove all other columns, remove the duplicates, and then the countries dimension table will just contain country ID and country columns, remove other columns, and then I'm gonna remove the duplicates. And then now if I go back into my products table, there's a lot of information here that I don't need at all. 
So I don't need the category ID, the category name, or the subcategory name. So let me just remove those columns because what essentially is going to happen here is that you can see that the products table will connect to the subcategories table on the subcategory ID. So that's why we leave the subcategory ID in here. And then if I go to the stores table, we'll need the store ID, the store name, and the city ID. That's it. Remove other columns and we're good to go. So now what I'm going to do is close and apply. And our visual is obviously no longer working because we changed our data model. So let me just go to model view right here on the top left. And you can see that it looks a little bit different now. So let me make it a tiny bit smaller here. And now we have our gym equipment sales fact table, which is still correct. We have the date table connected to it, which is correct. And then Power BI try to make some relationships here for me. Let's just see if it's correct or not. So we have products, subcategories, categories, and then we have two more tables here. So one is the countries and oh God, we have cities here all the way. All right, let me move this into the middle and let me make it a little bit bigger. So let me just focus on products uh, first. Yeah, let's focus on products first. So if I hover over this, yes, it is connected on the product ID. It's a many to one relationship, single cross filter direction. That looks good to me. Subcategories, let me hover over this now. So subcategories connected on the subcategory ID. Yes, that looks good to me as well. And then I have the category ID, which again is a D relationship we want to see. Yes, that is correct. And then let me go to my stores table now, which should connect to the cities, which should connect to the countries table. So stores table, let's just see. So this is connecting on the store ID, which is correct. And then here we have a one-to-one -one relationship, which is not what we want. I think we have a one-to-one -one right now because we only have one store in one city, but we would like this uh, to be many-to-one. So let me just see. So let me click on this cross filter direction. Yes, I definitely don't want this to be one-to-one. -one. So it's going from the cities table city ID to the stores table city ID. So in that sense, I want it to be a one to many single and apply the changes. So yeah, the arrow is obviously going from the cities table to the stores table, which is correct. And it's the one we want. And then I have countries table and the cities table connected on the country ID, which is correct. It's a many to one relationship. Um, and the relationship is active, the cross filter direction is single. Yes, that looks correct to me. So yeah, that's about it. I would say this is some simple data modeling in Power BI. Let me just check that our visuals will actually work. So again, I'll create the same column chart. So let me just chuck in the dates, the price, and then I'll grab the category name. And we can see that yes, everything still works, which means our data model worked. So just to quickly recap, let me open, uh, oh, not this one, but let me go back to my Power BI file. This is our Snowflake schema. You can see that we have one fact table and then we have dimension tables with sub dimension tables connected to it. And then we had our star schema, which is gonna be right here. There you go. And the star schema just had one fact table in the middle, and then we had three dimension tables connected to it. So super, super simple. Star schema, simple, very easy to understand, very easy to query. Snowflake schema, it's a bit more complicated. Whichever one you choose, it'll depend on the business use case. So this, well, I guess, yeah, in this video, I'm not gonna go into detail about when to use what, but for simplicity, star schema is definitely better. And I'm afraid this is the end of this video. If you found this video useful, then you should definitely check out these videos right here. Thank you so much for just taking a little time out of your day to watch this and I shall see you in the next one.